You may have heard pianists talk about voicing. If you've been confused, it's certainly understandable, since the term actually has several entirely different meanings in piano playing. Let's talk about the first one, chord spelling versus voicing. Once we know which notes are in a chord, called the spelling of a chord, we can distribute those notes in many different ways. Each of these ways is called a voicing, and the voicings are limited only by your imagination, the rules of harmony, and how far the hands can stretch. The actual notes of a chord may be given, but you can change the sound of the chord in several ways while retaining the harmony. Each voicing will give you a, a different sound and a subtly different emotion. Listen to the difference between this sound and this. Both are a C major triad in root position, meaning that the root of the chord, C, is the bass note, in other words, the bottom note. Yet in the second chord, the notes are far apart. The harmony is the same, yet the sound is very different. Voicing, in this sense, deals with how close together or how widely spaced the notes of a chord are. Also, which note, if any, is doubled, and which note, if any, is omitted from the chord. It would be far too technical to delve into these details for this introductory lesson on the meaning of voicing at the piano. For now, it's important to understand that once we have the notes of a chord, such as C, E, G, for the C major triad, how we distribute those notes on the keyboard, or among different instruments if you're playing in an ensemble, this is the first meaning of voicing at the piano. I'll give you a couple of examples from actual pieces of music. Notice, for instance, the chords in the opening to this piano sonata by Beethoven. This is the sonata in E major, opus 14, number one. In this passage, the chords in the left hand are in close position. The opening of Beethoven's penultimate piano sonata in A flat major, opus 110, involves A flat major and the dominant seventh of A flat. What's unusual is the spacing of these chords. Beethoven leaves an entire octave and a half between the inner voices of the chord. This is called open position. So Here's the very opening again, and you'll notice the chord is A flat major. So you have A flat, an E flat, another A flat, and a C. The chord A flat major is A flat, C, E flat. So you have all of these notes. The A, you have two A flats. That means the A flat is doubled. And in between here, these middle voices, you could actually fit the entire chord. So in a nutshell, if you could put another chord tone between any upper notes of a chord, that chord is said to be in open position. There's a second meaning of the word voicing as it relates to the piano. This meaning also has to do with voicing chords, though in a completely different way. Once the exact notes and where to play them on the keyboard are given, the next question is how we play them. Do we play all the notes equally loudly? Or maybe we want to highlight a particular note in the chord. The dynamic balance within a chord is the second meaning of the term voicing at the piano. Let's have a listen to the same sonata, opus 110 by Beethoven. In the Beethoven sonata we just briefly heard, the four voices are not equally important. The most important voice is the melody, which is the soprano voice. The second most important voice is the bass, the lowest voice. The middle
middle voices are of tertiary importance, so they should not be as loud as the outer voices. So uh, that's just filling in the harmony. There's nothing really melodic about that. So we can voice this opening according to the relative importance of the voices. This means applying more pressure to the melody, somewhat less pressure to the bass line, and playing the inner voices the softest, like this. Now, if I were to play all of the voices equally loudly, then it would sound something like this. And I think you'll agree that doesn't sound nearly as musical as the other option. Now, your piano technician might mention voicing the instrument. This refers to something altogether different, making the hammer softer or harder to change the tone quality of the piano itself. Voicing a piano usually involves softening the hammers. There are two ways to do so. The primary way to voice a piano involves using a voicing tool that consists of a handle with voicing needles. So this is what a voicing tool looks like. These needles prick the felts of the hammers to soften them. The second way to soften hammers is to reshape them by shaving off a little bit of the felt. As you play a piano and the hammers strike the strings over and over again, grooves form on the hammers. The hammers have been compacted and are particularly hard where the grooves form. This makes them louder and they could sound harsh over time. By shaving off some of the felt, the hammers can regain their rounded shape where the grooves formed. Reshaping the hammers in this way needs to be done judiciously since it permanently re removes a little bit of the felt, so there's only so much reshaping that you can do in this way. Now the opposite is also possible, namely to harden hammers. This is done by using a special lacquer Many piano technicians prefer avoiding lacquer wherever possible since it can significantly change the tone quality. It's not really possible to undo this change in the sound, and even using a voicing needle to soften, to, to soften the hammers again doesn't tend to result in the same quality of sound, so lacquer is generally best reserved for special circumstances. In this lesson, you've learned three entirely different meanings for the term voicing as it relates to piano playing. One is how far apart you play the notes of a chord. Two is the dynamic balance of notes within a chord. And three is softening or hardening the hammers to change the sound quality of your piano.